Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where we're going to be talking all about tags. Now tags are an entity component system concept where we can use them to essentially tag entities in order to run systems on entities that are tagged with that tag. So for example, if we have this scene where we have a number of cubes that are just rising up off the ground, but say we only wanted the red cubes to rise off the ground. Well, one approach we could take is to tag all the red cubes with a red cube tag, and then our system would only run on things with that red cube tag. So anyways, in today's video, we're gonna be talking a little bit more about what tags are, when to use them, some of the downsides of using tags, sometimes that you may wanna use something else other than a tag, and then towards the end, I'm gonna show you how to actually use tags properly in your game created with Unity's Entity Component System. But before we get into all that, I'd just like to say if you do find today's video helpful, I'd really appreciate if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's Entity Component System and their data-oriented technology stack. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on our Discord community at uh, tmg.dev slash discord. Okay, so for starters, what exactly are tags? So tags are a special type of data component that doesn't actually have any data. It's just an empty component where we literally just define it with a name and that's it. And typically when I name tags, I just include the word tag at the end. So later on in the video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a red cube tag and it's called red cube tag. So now the actual purpose of using tags is to filter out our entity queries. So in the entity component system, we're typically going to be running systems over a large number of entities that fit a given archetype. Now an archetype is basically just kind of a structure of a type of entity with a given set of components associated with it. So when we run our entity query, we can basically say, give me all the entities that have these specific components on them. And so we can use tags to further filter out our entity queries so we can find the specific set of entities that we're looking for. Now, when we use the entities.foreach function, that essentially does an entity query. So when we define all the ref and in data components that we're looking for, that basically creates an entity query, which will allow us to run that specific system over that set of entities that is returned. Now, one common use for tags is to essentially trigger different events with them. So let's say an entity walks past a certain milestone in your game or something like that. You can apply a tag to that entity and then you can have a system that runs on entities tagged with that specific thing. And then you can basically run some further logic after that. Now, the one downside of using tags is that when you're adding and removing tags from entities, this is a structural change, which is a little bit more intensive than say just setting a variable on a data component. Now, that being said, it's still gonna be very resource intensive if you're you know, constantly every frame adding and removing a ton of tags from a ton of different entities. So if you're doing something like that, then it might be a better idea to use something like flags, where you could have a data component that just has, you know, maybe one or two fields, um, one of them being a flag, which is just kind of like an, an is active tag or something along those lines. And then you would basically just set this is active to true. And then you can basically just do a check inside your system and you say, all right, let's look at this component first. If this is active flag is set to true, then let's go ahead and perform this logic here. Now, the problem with that is you actually have to reference this other data component inside your system. Um, with a tag, you actually don't need to reference the data component, and I'll be showing you how to do that when we get to the tutorial section of that. And there's also that extra if statement check that you have to go through, which isn't necessarily that complicated to do on its own, but you know, let's say you have 100,000 entities and maybe only 10 of them actually have that is active flag to true, that means you still have to check through, you know, 100,000 entities and run your system across those 100,000 entities and only apply that system to the 10 that matter. So if that were the case, then using something like tags would be much better because you could just tag those 10 entities and your entity query is only gonna be 10 entities long instead of 100,000. So to summarize it, I'd say use tags in most cases, unless you run into a situation where you're just adding and removing tags, you know, like crazy every single frame, and you actually are noticing some performance hits because of it. All right, so let's go over to Unity here. So as you can see, I have this pretty simple scene set up. Again, it's basically just a whole bunch of cubes 
Right now, if we hit the play button, you'll see that all the cubes basically just start to rise because I have this um, move cube system set up. And by the way, all the project files and code used in this video are going to be available using the link in the description below. All right, so first things first, let me show you how to actually create one of these tags. As you can see, I have it here. It's extremely simple. So we just define a public struct. It must be a struct, not a class. Um, and again, called the red cube tag. And I just like to put that word tag at the end so I can easily tell that it is a tag. And then we are going to be implementing the I component data interface, which is basically the ECS way of showing that this is a data component. And in order to get that, we must include the using unity.entities library. And then the one other thing I'm gonna point out here is I just have the generate authoring component attribute. This is basically going to allow me to assign this tag inside the Unity editor. Uh, you do not need this if you're just adding and removing tags from code. So we'll just come over to Unity and I'll go ahead and select the four red cubes that I have here. We'll go ahead and add a component and we'll just go ahead and add on this red cube tag here. So you see the red cube tag is now on this red cube or these four red cubes I should say. Um, and as you can see, there's no you know variables or anything that we can set in here, of course. So as you can see here, here's my move red cube system, which is defined by using the public class move red cubes, which inherits from system base. And as you can see, I'm just using an entity command buffer, which I will be using to um, set the component data later on in the script here. And then here we have a basic entities dot for each function which as you can see, when I hit play in play mode, that's what causes all the cubes to essentially slowly rise upwards. Now, again, we want to filter by red cubes. So one approach that we could take is right after the ref for translation. Again, ref is read and write access. We can do an in keyword and an in keyword is basically gonna give us read only access to the data component in question. And then here we can put in our red cube tag. And if we wanted, we could call it red cube tag. Now, however, this is not the best way to do things because when you do this, it actually gets a reference to the red cube tag. And we don't necessarily need to read any data off the red cube tag because there is no data to read on the red cube tag. So you may be tempted to do that at first, um, but go ahead and delete that because there's actually an easier way to do this. So I'm just going to go right after the entities, um, do a new line here, and we'll do a dot with all. So the dot with all is basically a way that we can filter out all these entities um, that have a specific set of data components, but we don't necessarily need to read data off of them. So here we can just do um, put in the type of red cube tag. We can just put it in there like that. If we had multiple, maybe we could do like a comma um, and then we could have like a large cube tag or something like if, if the cube was like oversized, then we could, you know, filter out cubes that are red and large. And you don't necessarily have to put just tags in there. So for example, you could put in like a physics body or a translation component really any type of ECS data component you can put inside there. And there are other ones that you can add such as uh, the with any. So if you were to maybe like de define a list of like five data components, um, it would bring back in your entity query, any entity that had any one or more of those data components. Um, you could even do a with none. So if you wanted to filter out on things that do not have a specific tag, you could do a with none. But so anyways, that's all there really is to tag. So if we just go back to Unity here, let this compile, then we'll go ahead and enter play mode here. You'll see that now only the cubes tagged with the red cube attribute are now actually rising. And again, one approach to take is maybe we could check all the cubes and then go actually on the renderer component and see, you know, is this cube actually red? But again, you know, that's gonna be quite inefficient because we have like 20 total cubes here but only four of them actually um, apply. But again, we're just filtering out by tag here, so we can just click the orange cube, and maybe we can add the red cube tag onto that. So we can hit play, and then now we have the four red cubes as well as the one uh, orange cube, which we added the red cube tag onto. So anyways, that's just about it for today's video. I really do hope that you enjoyed it and you learned a thing or two about using tags in Unity's entity component system. 
If you did, I really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's NTP component system and their data-oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down, down in the comment section below. Also, uh, feel free to come join us over on Discord. we got a nice little community over there. Just go to tmg.dev slash Discord to join. And with that, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.